air. Okay, so I didn't actually paint this lighthouse plein air. Actually, this painting was done uh, for a commission. Uh, the client, a friend of mine, gave me very specific color notes that they had. And as you can see from those sketches I showed you, I went through a lot of different iterations to kind of land on the different color schemes and composition that they were looking for. And then it came down to really figuring out how can I come to do a painting that has the most realism possible, that it's the most lifelike that I can do without actually going to do the painting plein air. And the thing that I came up with was to basically make a sculpture out of this lighthouse based off of the sketches that I did. So I'm, you can see here that I'm sort of fleshing out the shapes of the lighthouse and the building using cardboard and aluminum foil. And then I'm using air dry clay to go over the top of it. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And uh, I was thinking about using this protein bar box to maybe be like the cliff that I would sit on and kind of pad it out with um, some plastic bags or something else to kind of pad it out with to make it an organic shape and uh, then cover it in clay. So we'll see how that goes. This is my first time making a sculpture like this. In general, you want some kind of an armature or something underneath the clay. You don't want solid clay because, well, it'll crack and it'll use up all your clay. This air dry clay is very cool. Literally, I don't have to cook it or bake it or anything. It'll just sit for 24 hours and then it dries and then it's ready to be painted or do whatever I want to do with it. Now I'm just painting over what would be sort of the grassy area of the scene with gouache paint. Instead of uh, carving out the rocky outcropping with clay, I thought, why not just use the, the actual texture of the aluminum foil and paint it black. Um, I was okay with some reflectivity here because I figured, hey, it's going to be wet. So that reflectivity on the rocks will just kind of emulate what, would, what rocks would look like. And I came in here and I continued to paint the lighthouse and this is the final piece that I had. I attached it to some white foam board and then decided to take it out into natural lighting, sunset colors, and photograph my own reference photo uh, to actually get a sense of the shapes and the color and the way light would fall on these forms. And uh, basically created my own realistic photo reference without having to travel all the way to California, which honestly I would have preferred to do, but uh, didn't work out this time. So. I will say there's a few aspects of this painting that are purely imaginative, and that is the sky here. I went through several iterations. You can actually see in the corner here, my sketchbooks open with the different color studies I did, uh, really trying to design cloud design that uh, would kind of lead the eye through the composition to focus on the lighthouse and uh, have the color scheme that the client wanted. And I also decided to invent the water. Um, I've been going through Ian Roberts' book on composition, and one of the composition techniques he talks about is radiating lines. And uh, after doing some wave studies, looking at basically Google images of waves and also some paintings of waves, I decided to more or less invent the waves as well uh, to fit the composition. Um, to me, the main focal point of this is the lighthouse and the little shack and uh, the grassy area and the rocks. And so that's what I focused on. I really enjoyed this process. This is something that James Gurney talks about a lot. Of course, he has his book called Imaginative Realism where he talks about uh, some of these techniques. And I've also looked at some of his Gumroad videos, for instance, how he paints dinosaurs. Um, highly recommend those videos. And it's very cool to see uh, a great artist like that follow this technique and to me, um, in a lot of ways, this did feel kind of like painting from plein air because uh, the photo reference that I had, as well as the sculpture, I really felt like I had extremely strong um, lighting information. I had extremely strong form information. And I think those are the things that go into making a painting have a sense of realism. Uh, for instance, the gradation on the tower here of the lighthouse as it kind of moves from the part that's receiving light into shadow and the different parts of the shadow and then this edge here where it gets bright again because there's reflected light. Uh, ostensibly that would have been from you know either the land mass 
uh, or maybe more of the water outcropping. And I think little nuances like that, that, you know, the side, the opposing side that's not receiving the light uh, directly was getting reflected light. I think being able to see that in my photo reference, being able to see the subtle shadows on uh, the little shack here, and just being able to uh, piece those things together using the specific color scheme that the client wanted, using, um, you know, after doing several sketches of a lighthouse, finding a lighthouse design that uh, the client liked, that I liked. To me, uh, it was just a really fun process to, to go through. And um, even, you know, inventing, for instance, the reflection on these rocks or like the reflection of the land mass of the grassy area, I think all of that would have been really hard to sell if it was purely imaginative, at least for me. And I feel like, you know, I did achieve a more or less good sense of realism. Um, and I, I like that there's sort of a balance here between the imaginative, maybe even the, the surreal slightly, the, the, I'm really pushing the colors a little bit. But also, like I said, a sense of realism. I feel like the focal point of the lighthouse and the shack the main focus point of this that it really pops out and that it does feel realistic and if i was standing in uh, several hundred yards away this is about as much detail as i would get in a plein air piece anyways so i hope you enjoy it remember you have a voice that matters go be creative i'll see you next time